Poppy. Perhaps the greatest champion ever to be designed by Riot Games. She's got percentage P damage, scaling resistance bonuses, tons of CC, and probably the silliest ult in the game. But the most important thing is that she scales eternally. That's right, as long as Riot keeps creating new champions with 15 dashes, she will continue to counter them. I would like to welcome you all to my Jungle Poppy Guide. I am Dactomaniac, Master Rank Poppy OTP with 1.5 million mastery, and currently one of the best Jungle Poppy players in NA, which is pretty good. Or at least, that's what my mom says. So let's get into Jungle Poppy, and why I, at least, prefer it way above top lane Poppy. First off, Poppy is a counterpick in the top lane. If you pick before your lane opponent, chances are you're gonna get counterpicked. Gwen, Set, Darius, Aatrox, Fiora, Olaf. While these matchups are winnable, it's not worth the brain power trying to outplay these champions with a dreaded 200 year design. And top lane is kinda coin flippy. You can smash your lane opponent into the ground, but look at the scoreboard and see your bot lane is 2 and 12 at 10 minutes. And the game's already doomed. With jungle, you have a chance to be everywhere and help everyone to hopefully avoid these outcomes and make your games 100% better. Plus, Poppy is just way better in the jungle. With all the walls and angles you can gank from, it makes her playability a lot better. So let's begin at the start, with the best Poppy builds for jungle. For Ruins, and I'm just gonna point this out here, I get an odd amount of comments mentioning I pronounce Ruins instead of Ruins. I didn't know it bothered people that much, but apparently it does. Sorry, I kinda have a dialect, I say Mountain, I say Y'all a lot, that's just how my brain says Ruins. You always want to go with the Domination Tree. Your Keystone will either be Dark Harvest or Predator. I take Dark Harvest when I plan on going Divine or Dustblade as my Mythic, and Predator when I plan on going full tank with Sunfire or Gauntlet. Next, we take Cheap Shot if the enemy team is tankier, or Sudden Impact if they are full of squishies to make use of Poppy's insane base damage. Eyeball Collection is next. And then lastly, we go Ingenious Hunter if you have Predator. If not, we take Relentless Hunter for more move speed. Secondaries, it's all about more move speed. We go with the Sorcery Tree and we take Celerity and Water Walking. Move speed is your most important factor as Jungle Poppy. It helps get around the map, get into position for ganks, clear camps, and the speed you need to run down the enemy. As for what items to build, there is also a wide variety of choices to pick from, but I'm just going to cover the meta builds to keep it straightforward for Tank Poppy, Bruiser Poppy, and my personal specialty, Assassin Poppy. In situations where you need to build Tank, examples of that would be if you have a Vigar, a Jinx, a Kog'Maw, Kassadin, Kaler, or any other hyperscalers. And I know going Tank and relying on other players to carry you is rough, but believe me, it actually happens once in a while. I try to back around 1k gold when playing Tank Poppy. The first buy will always be boots for the Predator Active and Sheen. Sheen is a fantastic damage item for Poppy and it really helps in the early game for some spicy damage for ganks. But we never finish the Sheen. We'll build it for early damage and sell it later when you need to make room. Afterwards, we start building our Mythic. Tank Mythics you want to build Iceborne most of the time, but Sunfire is a good option when the enemy team has a lot of auto-based champions like Yon or Yasuo. If you are building Tank, you already have Predator, so Chem Tank is a little overkill with buttons to press. After your mythic, finish your boots, tabbies if they have more auto-based champions, merc treads if you need the tenacity, or moby boots if you want to gank non-stop. Your next item will be move speed related. Dead man's is the usual go-to, but if they have a lot of magic damage, go force of nature. Either way, you're gonna be building both of these items, it's just a matter of priority. Those are the must-have items for Poppy. Anything else is optional. Abyssal Mask is great to help your AP carries do more. Spirit Visage helps with more sustain, especially if it's Ocean Soul. Thornmail's great for Grievous Wounds, and finish your build off with the Warmogs, Randuins, or Gargoyle Stone Plate. Bruiser Poppy is pretty much the exact same build as Tank, the only difference is your Mythic, and runes you take. Divine will be your Mythic of Choice, followed by Dead Man's Force of Nature, and any other item in the Tank build. You're still relatively tanky, but this gives you more sustain and damage in fights, and allows you to contribute more to kills, a lot more than Tank Poppy, at the cost of durability. Assassin Poppy is a high-risk, high-reward build. It's great for when your team already has a tank, or when the enemy team is full of squishies, and you get ahead early. Ruins will be the same as Bruiser Poppy, so just in case things don't go your way, you can always default to the classic Sunderer tank build. Duskblade will be your go-to mythic. Its bonus damage makes your burst insane and easily allows you to 100-0 the enemy with your full combo. Plus, Poppy is an all-in, one-and-done assassin. The stealth after the kills helps you get out and position for another possible wallstone combo. Moby Boots will be your best option to gank as much as possible. The next item you Rush's Collector. If you didn't already one-shot champs with Duskblade, you will now. For the rest of your build, it depends on the situation. Does your team need a tank? Start building tank. If not, you are free to build as much lethality as you need. Yumu's, Edge of Night, and Lord Doms will be the rest of your build. For clearing paths, if you start on the bot side, you will start red. If you start on the top side, you will start blue. Wherever your bot lane is, is where you will want a leash. The faster the leash, the faster you can get into lanes and gank. 
If you start red, go birds, wolves, blue, and then gromp. Only clearing your krugs if you know the enemy jungler will full clear as well. Blue side, go gromp, wolves, birds, reds, and then krugs. For efficient camp clears early on, you want to try using one shieldy passive per camp. Any more than that and you're taking too long. Starting off by clearing red or blue buff, start by throwing your shield and using a Q to animation cancel it. Wait until the monster is just about to hit you and then pick up your shield. Doing so will allow the most out of your passive. Any earlier and the shield will fall off before you get the maximum use of it. Once you have your E, camp clears will become a little different. You'll want to start throwing your passive shield. As soon as it leaves your hand, cast your E to animation cancel it. This will cause both you and your shield to hit the target at the same time. Once the E lands, cast your Q to hit the entire camp, pick up your shield and proceed with a normal rotation. Another trick pop you can do while clearing is, while you're clearing your blue buff, you're able to double clear Grom by throwing your shield to draw aggro, pulling them both to this location, which allows you to clear both of them at once. Some more tips for Poppy in the jungle is that your shield will always return to you if it kills the unit it's thrown at. This includes monsters, wards, and even jungle plants. Your W will stop units that dash through it. This includes Scuttle Crab. Once the Scuttle Crab reaches the end of the river, it will dash in the opposite direction. You can use your W to block it for a faster, more controlled clear. Your W will also block Blast Cone interaction. However, the enemy has to be the one to trigger the cone or nothing will happen. Pesky enemy jungler have Rift Herald? Is that cheeky bastard about to use it on your tower? Well, just press R! That's right, if you hit a summon Rift Herald with your charge at R, you will send it back to Kingdom Come, allowing you for more time as possible to stop it from charging your precious tower waifu for all its gold. Keep in mind, it's immune while being summoned and while it's winding up to charge, so you have to hit it in between or you're gonna get pinged by your team. Ganks! Possibly the most important part of being a jungler. If you don't gank, well then it's likely you're just playing Karthus jungle. How does one gank? What's the best way to gank? And how do I keep my clothes from being stained with all the blood from my enemies? Well, for starters, my personal favorite cheese gank can only happen if you're starting topside. After clearing blue, we run into the enemy birds. You'll either catch them there clearing or just get some free chicken nuggets. Either way, after their birds, you're gonna head either mid or bot. Preferably mid, but if they don't have the kill pressure, head down bot for a surprise cheese gank. Generally, the best way to gank is going to try to pin them against a wall for a pretty guaranteed kill. If you can't wall stun them, then get behind them and use your E to push them farther away from their tower and closer to the warm embrace of death that is your team. Another thing to think about is counter ganks. Make note of where you think the enemy jungler is starting and keep track of how you think they will gank. If they start red while you start blue, they should be around topside when you are. Also pay attention to any lanes they camp. Chances are they're going to keep camping it, and you can be there each time they do in T-Post to show jungler dominance. Also, don't be afraid to completely ignore a lane. For example, if you have a Riven top versus a Malphite, chances are she's not going to win that. Even with a gank, you're probably not going to get much done, and Malphite can just ult out. In that case, you want to gank mid and bot as much as possible. Riven will just need to learn to deal with it, play safe, and farm it up for team fights. But with the average league player mental, that could be trying at times. Lastly, let's go through matchups. Who does Poppy excel against? What champions make me want to run home crying to mommy? Well, let's take a look. For the easier matchups, we have Amumu, Belveth in the early game, Diana, Jarvan, Kane, Kha'Zix, Rengar, and Rexa are easy until they get Edge of Night, then it's a little more difficult, Vi, and then Zac. Harder matchups are Echo, Evelyn, Fiddlesticks, Graves, Lee, Lilia, Master Yi, Nunu, Shiv, Warwick, and Volibear. And for the impossible matchups, these are the big boys, the enemy junglers you want to avoid and gank on the complete opposite side of the map. Olaf, Trundle, Udyr, Wukong, and Viego. You will never win against these champions if you decide to fight them one-on-one. -on -one. Once all is said and done and the jungle phase is over, it's time for team fights. Your role in team fights really depends on the game situation. Are you extremely ahead? Feel free to go balls deep and run down the enemy carry and make them regret ever picking that role. But if you are behind, it's time to play protect the carry. Poppy has fantastic PO and is a major pain for any assassin or high mobility champion to deal with. Let's be honest, that's every single champion released in the past few years, except maybe Seraphine. But we all know how I feel about that. And that just about wraps it up. I've been playing Poppy for a nothing. long, oh, long time, and I've conveyed every single thing I've learned throughout the years in this guide, but if I missed anything or if you have any further Poppy-related questions, head on over to twitch.tv slash dagdomaniac. I'll be there every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday night playing Poppy, having oh, a good old time, and sharing oh, my infinite wisdom on all things Poppy and anime thighs. <laughs>